Good day, race fans! I'm Unsilent, and we're on the air with Grand Prix 2! The 1996 Formula One sim developed by Jeff Kramen and published by Microprose. It simulates the 1994 Formula One World Championship and we've reached part number eight, which is round number eight of the 1994 Formula One World Championship, the halfway point, the British Grand Prix from Silverstone, one of the homes of Formula One. It's really Britain and Italy. They've each hosted Formula One every year since 1950 when the championship started though Italy and Germany have both hosted more races as a country than Britain but Britain is the home of motorsports and here is the Silverstone circuit as it was in 1994 several changes in fact between what we have here and what we have today at Silverstone the I guess the uh, international circuit the Wellington circuit the arena circuit whatever you want to call the modern iteration in the bridge circuit as it is here if you look around the middle of the screen, you see that runway that isn't red shooting off to the right where the track goes left. That is where the circuit bends off into the new uh, bits and pieces where you go down towards uh, Village and the Loop. And that long straightaway that you see there, we will take a look at... We will take a look at this in F1 2016. Now here we go out of Stowe, that's the new pit in just before Vale. Vale's left club is this long double right as we pull on to the front straight here. A little too much curb if I do say so myself. But instead of going breaking down for a left at Abbey, it's a quick right and then a back to the left. That'll be flat in the modern F1 cars of 2017. I can't wait to play this on F1 2017. This is the Village Hairpin, followed by the Loop Hairpin. Slows you down so you can unleash the cars through Aintree and down the Wellington Strait. Now this is part of the Silverstone Club Circuit in 1994, but it's part of the main circuit now. And now it rejoins with the old circuit at Brooklyn's, but a much wider entry into Brooklyn's than we will see in 1994. Here we are coming out of Club, and here's the shot down to Abbey. Down the straight, break down for a first gear left, right chicane and Abbey. Under the bridge, into a turn, imagine it would be called bridge, which would go flat. Then it's into Priory, a slow left. Then Brooklyn's a slow left. Then you rejoin the circuit at Luffield. And that is the difference between Silverstone then and now. A look at the current 1994 Formula One World Drivers Championship in Grand Prix 2. It's David Coulthard on top, four wins from seven races. Behind him, Jean Lacey, Michael Schumacher, level on points, not on countback. Lacey with two wins, and Schumacher with but one win through seven races. Then Hill, Irvine, that's who I am playing as, trying to prove him, and Jordan in fifth. On to the World Constructors' Championship, it's Williams leading... Four wins to Ferrari's, two wins to Benetton's, one win. And then I've managed to power Jordan up to fourth, mostly by myself. And then you have Tyrrell, the Yamaha, with Yukio Katayama scoring the points for them. And the McLaren Peugeots of uh, mostly Mika Hakkinen scoring the points there, if I'm to be perfectly honest. Here's Friday qualifying, straight into Friday qualifying, and into Luffield, and oh, I just lose the back end, a little half spin, and that's just not going to do me any good. As I fight my way out of the gravel, that brings us back to the line, and it's going to be a 136. I was first for a second there, as I cross the line, and that just position keeps plummeting, and it keeps plummeting on my inlap, all the way down to stone dead last, as I get back to the pit lane. So one little mistake in the final corner, and I'm seven seconds behind Schumacher. I'm a second slower than Belmondo in the Pacific, who's just barely qualified for every race this season. So we go out again. No drama through Lafield. Charging through this last right at Woodcut. And so 133.42. One mistake. There you can see it's worth five seconds on the track. That's a big difference. But I had a little momentum, warm tires, low fuel, and we go for one more lap, and we set a better time. Seven tenths faster at a 
62. Good enough for position number four at this point in time in Friday qualifying, but this would be my best time. Would not hold up for fourth. In fact, it would drop me to sixth. And one second off the pace, David Coulthard with a 28.603. Only seven thousandths of a second ahead of Michael Schumacher for a provisional pole after Friday qualifying. Seven thousandths of a second in actual distance at the line would be worth about 21 inches. So it's a front wing end plate and a little bit. I'm not even sure that Schumacher's nose would have been behind the leading edge of Coulthard's right front tire at that rate. But then it's a half second back to Damon Hill, then a Lacey, Hackett, and Irvine. That's me rounding out the top six, top five within a second, and then it just kind of gets... Farther and farther back from the pole as you go back. Katayama, second and a half off. Barrichello right with him. Then you've got Berger, Morbidelli. Once you get back a little bit, you've got some interesting names. Herbert in 11th, DeCesaris in 12th. Panis, a power track. Silverstone might still be in 1994. And that uh, Renault in the back of the Ligier looking good there. With Michele Alberto rounding out the first page of the timing sheets. On to Saturday, I slapped a new uh, setup on here. I set my French setup on here, but uh, that's not going to help. I'm a rolling fog bank. And I try to nurse it back to the pits, but oh no, I'm on fire. I am well and truly on fire. I'm quite amazed they put in actual flaming engine failures into this game for 1996. So yeah, uh, I was hoping for some practice time on a new setup. It uh, didn't go particularly well, but I uh, tweaked it a little bit after my first qualifying run. Here's my second run. Fresh set of tires, one and a half seconds up through two sectors and just absolutely pounding the curbs out of bridge. Down into Brookfields, into Luffield. Just hold on to it. Break down a little bit through the second right. Charge to the line. Here we go. It's looking good. It's going to be a 127, 754, two and a half seconds faster than my previous best of Saturday. So just scrapping my original Silverstone setup and going with the Magni Coeur setup with a cup of a little bit lighter wing. And amazingly, I'm on the pole for the British Grand Prix by almost a second from David Coulthard, who is on the outside of row one. Michael Schumacher on the inside of row two alongside Damon Hill. It was Hill and Schumacher one and two in the real British Grand Prix. This started the change of the championship in 94. Schumacher was disqualified for passing Hill on the formation lap and then was handed a two race band after the race by the FIA. Add that in with his disqualification at the Belgian Grand Prix and all of a sudden Schumacher wasn't in like Four of the 16 races that season. No wonder why it was such a close championship. Row number three, Jean Lacy in the Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen rounding out the points-paying positions if the race finishes as it started in the McLaren Peugeot. Ukyo Katayama in the Tyrrell on P7 and Rubens Barrichello alongside. I was reading that the Yamahas just really never got up to speed in Formula 1, but you couldn't tell it from Grand Prix 2. Tyrrell's not a bad-looking car in this game, to be honest. Gerhard Berger on the inside of row 5, Johnny Morbidelli on the outside, car 10 in P10. We know Johnny Herbert's good from P12. How will he do from P11? We will find out soon. Pierluigi Martini in the first, Minardi did not set a time on Friday. All the pressure in the world was on him to set a good time on Saturday, and by God... Pierluigi Martini goes to position number 12 in the Minardi Ford, so I would call that a pretty good effort by the Italian driver in the Italian car. Olivier Panis, position number 13 in the Ligier, alongside Andrea de Cesaris in the Sauber Mercedes-Benz. Michele Alberto in the second of the Minardis on row 8, alongside Eric Coma in the LaRousse Ford. On on back to row number nine, Heinz Harold Frenzen in the second of the Sauber Mercedes. Two thousandths of a second ahead of Mark Lundell in the second Tyrrell. Jos Verstappen, four thousandths of a second behind that. And Martin Brundle, the last of those teammates that tend to be on this end of the grid, in position number 20. Half a, uh, half a tenth, sorry, half a tenth off of Heinz Harold Frenson. So those guys aren't very competitive with their teammates, but with each other, damn, they are close. Row 11, Eric Bernard in the second Ligier alongside Christian Fittipaldi in the second of the footwork Fords. Alex Zanardi, his teammates in P11, and he's in P23. I think he goes to uh, IndyCar 
not too long after this, 1996, I believe, is when he made that jump to IndyCar with Chip Ganassi Racing. Olivier Beretta, future sports car ace, in position number 24 in the second of the Larousses. And on the last row, it's David Brabham in the Simtek Ford, and then... Stop me if you've heard this before. John Paul Belmondo shotgun on the field in position number 26 of 26, the last qualifier. The warning horn goes. The engines come to life. It's race time for the British Grand Prix in Grand Prix 2. Four red lights. Revs come up. Bring the noise. And green, green, green. And away we go. And a little hit. Off the, my rear to start the race gives me a little jump start while I'm spinning the tires, but I'm through clean cops in turn one as we take a look at the replay. Coltart gave me a little bump up the rear, which slowed him down and let Hill buy from P4 into position number two through cops corner. But Coltart would not stay in fourth for long. Here he is going up the inside of Schumacher. Easy peasy lemon squeezy into Stowe. As we come to the end of lap one. Oh, Luffield. Oh, Luffield. And I fall back to position number five to close the first lap. Get boxed in and have to let a lacy by as Hill leads. But there's DC going up the inside into turn one. And he makes a pass. No, well, what the hell is that? And there's... Sorry, Ukyo. I've hit a lacy. I've hit Katayama. Here's a replay. Here's a replay focusing on me. And I'm just into the back of a lacy there on board with Schumacher. And what I think happens is Hill's forced wide and cops by Coltard. Schumacher checks up not to hit him and backs up everyone behind him as a result. Coming out of club corner into Abbey and I managed to put the move onto Lacey for position number four. Get the slipstream out of club, out drag him thanks to that. Just pull up alongside and have a car well positioned enough to effect a pass into Abbey. As we come back around Luffield again, Luffield again, and oh, Rubens is out! Rubens is out of the race on lap number two, what happened to him, and oh, Rubens! Unsighted into the back of another car, and based on how off-kilter that Tyrrell is, and how much it stopped, that's Ukiyo Katayama, replay from onboard Rubens. Katayama's just stopped on the exit of bridge, and Rubens unsighted had nowhere to go. How unsighted, well here's a look back from Katayama, just... Out of nowhere, there comes a speeding Jordan into the back of his Tyrrell. He had a puncture, and that slowed him down on the exit of bridge. A bad place to be wounded, but that's the result. I carry on lap number three. Schumacher up the inside of Hill. I decide discretion is the better part of Valor after the, my first lap mishap at Estoril in Magni Coeur. So I decide to hold behind, but a picture perfect pass by Schumacher for position number two. And then a few laps later, down into uh, Vale, it is. I go up the inside, out drag the Williams Renault into Vale, out of Stowe, and into position number three, and on the podium. And we're hunting down Schumacher, and here we go into Luffield, and out of Luffield yet again. My arch nemesis all weekend long as I lose a position to Hill by screwing up Luffield for the umpteenth time. Lacey takes a look up the inside into Woodcut and I just cut him off saying I'm having none of that. Here we go. Priory is the scene of my demise this time. And a couple laps later I completely box that up and hand over position to Lacey. Position number five is my spot now but I'm able to quickly catch him up. Coming out of Stowe, down into Club Dive Bomb, and here we go successfully by Lacey. Compared to the uh, Hill Pass from earlier, this was much more daring because I was only maybe about halfway alongside of Lacey. It was entirely based on the positioning of my car and where I was able to stick the nose that I was able to get by Lacey. Lap 11, we're closing in on Hill, and oh, oh no! As a puncture, a left front puncture! in Abbey and that sends me wide and completely out of control I'm right now running an F1 tricycle around Silverstone the left hand corner starting to problem because the weight shifts to the right tires but here I am in a whole world of trouble so I'm forming a truly train behind me I just pull off to the side there goes a Lacey and Hakkinen and Berger right behind him 
And as I pull into the pits with a three-wheel Jordan, let's take a look at the replay. Just as I was coming around the right at uh, Abbey there, the left front gives out on me. And I never had a prayer to save it. And I just had to limp that wounded car. I had, I was able to carry on, I'm not sure if uh, the tear roll of Kadayama would have been able to do the same. But here we go, pit stop time in 1994. Brakes on. I don't need a tear off, I just need a wipe with a really squeaky noise. Waiting for the tires to come on. Drop the jacks, 10.7 seconds. Oh, what an epically slow pit stop at a 50 mile per hour pit lane. I started that sequence in fourth, I hit the pits in seventh. And as we come out of the pits, we wait for the onboard computer to recycle and I'm back in 19th with four laps to go. That's race done, but that doesn't mean I can't still fight for pride. And we charge up the hangar straight. We are closing in very quickly on our first victim out of club. It's Olivier Panis as we head down to Abbey. Fresh tires, light fuel, and a pretty stout car. Gets me by him pretty quickly. And the next lap, the fastest lap of the race. Two laps to go. We're closing in on Michele Alboreto. Out of chapel, down the hangar straight. That Ford engine, the older Ford engine in the back of him, no match for my heart. And then it's Eric Bernard next, looking at him into Abbey and passing him on the straight. No tire failures through there this time. Final lap. It's Frenson in the Sauber by him on the hangar straight. Then it's Mark Lundell. We're going to take him down into the Vale. And as we take that left, we're going to come back to the right. Fresh tire, all the grip in the world, and see a Martin Brundle for P number 13. That's a power move if ever there was one. Through Priory into Brooklyn's. And Morbidelli off to your right is out of the race. He had a puncture and he was out. So that promotes me to position number 12. And if I had another lap, I probably would have gotten Verstappen there for 11th. But across the line, an adventurous race. Probably adventurous of my own doing, though I do have the excuse of a tire puncture throwing me all the way back in the pack as I finish position number 12 as this race mercifully ends and there's the results of the Grand Prix 2 version of the 1994 British Grand Prix it's David Coulthard winning his fifth race of the season followed by Michael Schumacher Damon Hill in position number three the two Ferraris Lacey and Berger Berger got by Hakkinen probably almost entirely because I held up uh, Alessi and Hakkinen in that truly train with a punctured tire and then you look back a bit, that's De Cesaris, Martini, Herbert, all together there within a second and a half of each other. One more problem up front, and we would have seen a very interesting sixth place point score, a Sauber, a Minardi, or a Lotus, and Eric Coma rounding up the top ten. I was in 12th, and 26 seconds off of Hakkinen. So that's about, well, pretty much the length of a, uh, pretty much the length of a, going through the pits 50 miles per hour through the pits plus an 11 second pit stop not helped by the fact that I had a wounded car that I had to drag around there did not help things very much that uh, definitely hurt any chances I had of winning that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it is it was that damn left front tire that foiled me from a chance well it did foil me from a chance for points probably a chance for the podium too on back to the second page of the results and as you can see three DNFs lapped up to position number 19 well position number 20 because Morbidelli DNF'd so he finished just two corners shy of the finish but technically one lap off the pace but Fittipaldi had a puncture Katayama had that puncture Barrichello's DNF from crash damage from running into the back of Katayama so yeah it was a bad day for the Goodyear tire engineers at this version of the Silverstone British Grand Prix four cars suffering tire failures that put them out of the race or functionally out of the race in my case and then well I guess five if you include Barrichello because his DNF was a result of Katayama's tire failure the world drivers championship DC in P1 with five wins then it's Michael Schumacher assuming a sole position of second place John Lacey in third Damon Hill in fourth I'm in fifth it's Gerhard Berger who made up some ground on me in 6th, Yukio Kadayama in 7th, no points, Rubens Barrichello no points in 8th, 
Mika Hakkinen with his third points finish of the season in P9, and Jos Verstappen hasn't scored since the Brazilian Grand Prix. Really has to get off the schneid at some point because it's uh, looking unbecoming when your teammate is that far up in the World Drivers' Championship. On to the World Constructors' Championship. It's the same as we entered. The gaps have changed a little bit with Williams up top, then Ferrari and Benetton, Jordan in fourth, Tyrrell in fifth, and McLaren Peugeot in sixth. You know, while Schumacher's made it up to second in the driver's standings, without that help from Verstappen, he's fighting two Williams and two Ferraris that are scoring points damn well near every race except when they have a problem. So when you're doing that and you're doing your best and you've scored 38 of 39 points for your team, Schumacher's trying, but you want to know why Benetton actually didn't win the 94 World Constructors Championship? It's because Schumacher scored all the points for his team. Well, not all, but substantially all the points for Benetton in 94. That's why I still think he had a fantastic campaign, only being allowed to contest 12 races and somehow coming out with the World Championship, even if in controversial fashion. The next round of the 1994 Formula 1 World Championship brings us to Germany, the German Grand Prix from the Hockenheim Ring. That looks a lot different than the Tilkenheim Ring that we have at Hockenheim now, the uh, Tilk Drome that is the current Hockenheim layout, and yes, we will do the comparison. I do not like the new Hockenheim layout at all. I can understand why they have it. It's safer because it's not going off into the forest for four miles, but this is a gorgeous track layout low down force charge out of the north curve into the forest for a chicane back up to top speed for another chicane bring it back up to 190 for another chicane low down force this game has slipstream op and it's going to be drag races and slipstreaming and it's going to be glorious because there's going to be a lot of overtaking and a lot of battling on this is why i love that track so this is going to be a fun one next time out on Grand Prix 2 as we cross the halfway point and get into the home stretch of the 1994 Formula 1 World Championship. Can we in the latter half score a win? Well, you'll just have to come back in a few weeks and find out. But thanks very much for joining me for this time on Grand Prix 2. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Share on social media. Follow on social media. The social media handle is Unsilent on Air, and that is for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And don't forget to check out more Grand Prix 2. The playlist is on the screen in the description down below. More videos to the right and on the channel. And until next time, I'm Unsilent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.